And I call the clerk. Government Business, Order of the Day number 1, Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission Bill 2018, resumption of debate on the second reading and on the amendment moved by the member for Franklin. Before the debate is resumed on this bill, I remind the House it's been agreed that a general debate be allowed covering this bill and the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission Consequential Amendments and Transitional Provisions Bill 2018. The original question was this bill be now read a second time. To this, the Honourable Member for Franklin has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. So the question now is that the amendment be agreed to and I call the member for Ford. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. It's indeed a pleasure to rise in this House and speak about what I'm sure all of us acknowledge is an extraordinarily important topic, and that is the topic of the quality of care that our elderly in our community receive on a day-to-day -day basis. And this particular bill that we're debating today, Mr Deputy Speaker, is designed to deal with some of these very important issues because they do impact directly on the quality of care and the dignity of life of older Australians in residential aged care. We've seen over the past few weeks, Mr Deputy Speaker, the announcement of the Royal Commission into the aged care sector. And this Royal Commission will look into the quality of care provided in residential and home aged care for senior Australians, but importantly also include young Australians with disability living in residential aged care settings. I know, Mr Deputy Speaker, we've all in this place seen the many stories, uh, both on Four Corners, but also I'm sure we've received stories and representations in our various offices about the quality of care provided in residential aged care around our electorates. As a community, we rightly expect high standards of quality, care and safety for those in residential aged care and also in home aged care situations. And our government shares those expectations. And that is the purpose for the Royal Commission, because it will be about proactively determining what we need to do in the future to ensure those expectations are met. Sadly, evidence to date has shown that problems are not restricted to any one part of the aged care sector, whether it's the for-profit or not-for-profit sector, large or small facilities, regional or major metropolitan facilities. The Royal Commission will look at the sector as a whole without bias or prejudice, and it will take, make findings on evidence, and then as a government and as a parliament it will be our job to act on those findings to ensure that the care provided to older Australians is at the level that we would expect as a civilised society. But whether you're a senior Australian contemplating entering an aged care facility or are or already resident in such a facility, this bill in the House today is designed to be of a benefit to you. If you are one of the many Australians with a parent, grandparent or other relative who is resident in or contemplating entering an aged care facility or as an operator of or an employee in an aged care facility, this bill is designed to benefit you. So, Deputy Speaker, in 2017, around one in seven Australians were aged 65 and over. Well, we know from the statistics that growth in the numbers of people in aged care over 65 will occur very rapidly over the decade to 2031 and will roughly be twice as fast as the total population's growth. In fact, this group has grown in size over that period by 85 per cent, from three, a bit over 3 million to nearly 5.7 million people. The highest growth, however, will be in the 75 and over age group, which is projected to more than double in size to over 2.8 million. These large increases are a result of a variety of factors, including the baby boomer group, the decrease in mortality rates, or the ageing of the baby boomer group, the decrease in mortality rates, resulting in increased lifespan, 
It's also worth noting that since World War II, the average lifespan in Australia has increased in males by 12 and a half years and in women by 13 years. And of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, as the number of older Australians in our population increases, so do the number of Australians utilising aged care services and facilities. And we are seeing with that, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the range of medical conditions faced by these people is becoming more difficult for the level of care required, particularly for those with conditions such as dementia. This government is fully committed to ensuring Australians in the aged care system are better cared for, and this bill is an important part of ensuring this. These Australians, Mr Deputy Speaker, who have given their lives building this country deserve to get the quality care that should be expected in a country like Australia. At the heart of our aged care system, ultimately, these are people and their lives that we are looking after. Senior Australians seeking to live out their lives with dignity in environments where they know they are safe and will be cared for with compassion and professionalism. Where their quality of life is enhanced and perhaps most importantly, places they and their families can trust to deliver the high standards of care that every single senior Australian deserves. One of the reasons many Australians do go into care, Mr Deputy Speaker, is because their families can no longer take care of them themselves for a wide variety of reasons, whether it's busyness with work or family lives, as many of us know, that's the case for many people today, or the fact that their families may be living uh, far away from where their parents are living today. And this is a way that they can ensure their parents are properly looked after. One of the other reasons are matters of uh, security, personal security and safety, because they can't look after themselves properly at home anymore. Thankfully, there are many terrific community groups that do seek to help elderly, elderly Australians remain in their homes longer by doing such things as, as uh, little maintenance jobs around the house, mowing their yards, those sorts of things. But ultimately, that doesn't become or is not enough to meet their needs. Hence the need to move into aged care. This is where we're committed to ensuring that families can rest easy, knowing the right standards of quality and professionalism are maintained across the system. This bill, Mr Deputy Speaker, gives effect to the government's announcement in the 2018-19 budget to establish this new commission from 1 January 2019. This reform is part of a two-year agenda to strengthen and enhance aged care regulation to protect and assure the quality of care provided to aged care consumers. The Commission's objectives are to protect and enhance the safety, health, wellbeing and quality of the lives of aged care consumers, promote confidence and trust in the provision of aged care and to promote engagement with aged care consumers about the quality of care and services. In the budget, the government announced its response to the recommendations of the Carnell Patterson Review and establishing an independent aged care quality and safety commission was the first of the recommendations. The commission will consolidate the regulatory functions currently split across three regulators for aged care to improve clarity, regula regulatory accountability for providers and their staff and certain rights and responsibilities of aged care consumers and their families. The bill represents the first of two, two stages, a two-stage process of reform by establishing the Commission, which subsumes the existing functions of the Australian Aged Care Quality Agency and the Aged Care Complaints Commissioner from 1 January 2019. It's disappointing in some respects, Mr Deputy Speaker, that we seem regularly in this place to have to legislate for entities and organisations in our communities to do the right thing by fellow Australians. But, that as it may be, it is then our responsibility where we do identify these issues to put in place legislation 
and regulation to deal with those shortcomings that we are seeing out in our community. So, Deputy Speaker, I commend the government for its work in this space and its ongoing work to ensure that we provide the safety, the security and the level of care necessary for those older Australians who have contributed so much over the years to our community. And the work we're doing both in this legislation and the Royal Commission will go a long way, I hope, to dealing with the issues that we have seen articulated in the public arena. I commend this bill to the House.